we have some other callers on the line, Katie. Yeah. And uh, there's one that I was particularly interested in. I know that Katie and I are both trans people, and I think we want to people? talk about that a little bit today. <laughs> We're trans? Are we trans? I forgot. I forgot about that. So we yeah, have let's do it. Take him on. Eli, he, they in Virginia. Sounds like you want to talk about the brains of trans people. Uh, what is your okay, question or, or comment for us today? <laughs> yeah, hi. How are y'all doing today? Good, doing thanks. Right? How are you? How can yeah. we help? Sorry, it's not for Becky. I don't know how to say that. But, um, um, so, yeah, I guess my question would be, um, so I, I know that there are some cultural aspects when it comes to uh, trans individuals across the world. Um, and I, I guess like there's like here in the U S that, I mean, it's, sorry, let me start over. So, I, <laughs> um, my, my question has to do with, um, neurology, I guess, and trans individuals. I had read and I'd heard that there is a, um, link between the brain chemistry of trans people and um, their affirmed gender, how it matches that rather than that of their uh, gender assigned at birth, I guess. And I was wondering how that would translate into certain cultures that don't quite hold uh, strict views on uh, gender as we do here in the U.S. Right. I think this is um, this is really interesting discussion topic. And one of the most annoying things about it is the word gender. And it's because the mm. word gender has so many different meanings. Um, often when you're in like a sort of a, a radical feminist space or, or like a coming in from more of a feminist angle, you might hear people describe gender as like all of the stuff that we made up, like, um, you know, women wear dresses, men wear trousers, that kind of stuff. And also um, like a form of yeah. oppression in that, uh, you know, women are held back from doing certain jobs and men have to go and do other certain jobs and all this kind of stuff. And and you'd hear people say that as gender. Um, and that can include like stereotypes about people, but also it can in include like enforced roles inside a family or inside society. Um, but then also we have this kind of term gender identity, which is when you hear trans people talking about it, they're, they're not talking about um, this kind of thing that we made up that like is some kind of cultural understanding or enforced by people but they're more talking about some part of their uh brain or person in a similar way to like sexual orientation or handedness are like some part of you that develops over time um and of course what makes this extra difficult is we don't quite know how to what extent um differences mm -hmm. in behavior between men and women typically on like a population scale are down towards like societal traditions and pressures and, and roles and how much of it is like innate as a, you know, a word for it. So like the kind of nature versus nurture argument. Um, but what we can say is that trans people uh, do have some kind of na uh, nature part to it. And it's like largely nature. And we, where there's quite a lot of, things we can point to to see that like we do have the brain scans thing that you were mentioning um it is slightly more complicated than like brains on there isn't just like a man brain and a woman brain like that's kind of nonsense to even suggest it's yeah, like that yeah. not, not calling you out anything but there are like you know the brain is the most complicated organ in your body and there are so many different structures and chemist like chemistry and all kinds of different things going on and some of it has some kind of sexual dimorphism which means there is some kind of difference typically between men and women typically, but not in all individual cases and to a different degrees. And for some parts of the brain, you will find that trans women are much more like cis women. And for some of them, you'll find that trans men are more like cis men, but it's not necessarily all the parts. And there are some parts of the brain which are different in all trans people than for all cis people. So it's, it's kind of um, uh, complicated and we couldn't necessarily you couldn't like scan a brain and say this is a trans person for sure this is a woman for sure that's not something we have the ability to and potentially we never will um but 
<clears throat> so like when we're talking about trans people, that is one of the things we can say, well, trans people do exist because we've got some kind of, there's some kind of differences typically that with some level of confidence. There's lots of other things too. Like we know that conversion therapy doesn't work. Like if someone is trans, even if you try and torture them, it doesn't make it go away. Um, we know that in identical twins, even if they're separated at the birth, if one of them is trans, the other one is also more likely to be trans, which we wouldn't expect if it was totally social. And there's a few other things too. Um, but then combining into your sort of question about uh, about gender roles in societies, like it, there's been some form of trans people in almost every culture. I mean, every culture, as far as I'm aware, in sort of throughout human history, whether they're documented as someone who changes from one like box to another, or whether they're like often put into like, a third or, or even fourth box. Um, in, in some cultures you have uh, like, for example, in India, they have um, hijra, I think it's how it's pronounced or similar to that which traditionally has been like a third gender and um, they have their own kind of role in society and different beliefs about them. And it, they're seen as separate from men and women, whereas in perhaps the West, we might consider them to be trans women um, and they may or may not consider themselves to be that. And so we've got this kind of lens to look through of cultures. But what you were asking about whether we would see, I, I know in the notes you've uh, in the show, um, Core screen notes, we've got something like, does that make sense in cultures that don't care as much about gender stereotyping? And, and I think, I, oh yeah, sorry, Ben, I'm, I'm right yeah, enough. I'd like to, to jump in too, because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. biologically, this is a, an interesting conversation. And I mean, the, the more recent data is showing, like Katie was mentioning, that the overlap between male brains and female brains is, is so tight that that there's very few differences at all between a male brain and a female brain um so thinking about that as well there are other factors in biology that influence neuroanatomy and neurobiology so even when we're looking at this it let's say we found a difference on a pet scan uh, that's showing functionality of, of certain re regions at a certain period of time um, what other variables are contributing to the brain functioning in a, a certain way due to certain stimuli? You have hormone influences from the rest of the body, things like uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, things like testosterone, estrogen, cortisol are going to still have impacts on the way you, you process information at a certain period of time. So is this difference uh, related solely to neuroanatomy or are there other biological factors uh, playing into account as well? Um, but and even so, can change your brain. Even I mean, you learn things, don't you? It changes how your brain works. So absolutely. So it's I, and I think we need to be very careful with saying that um, the brain is essentially assigning you to to male or female, uh, whether yep. you're you're trans or cis, because I think we get into a oh, danger yeah. of pigeonholing people into well, you meet the brain criteria to be a woman, so you get to transition, and this other person doesn't. So it's in fact like uh, it, it puts us in a weird spot for like you were saying, the people that seem to be overlapping more categories because these categories are assigned by humans; these are made up categories. Uh, biology is very fluid, and people fit on different. Um, areas based on a number of different yeah. factors so yeah Sorry, i didn't mean to cut you off yeah, i was just i was just kind of agreeing with what you're saying how like yeah like science does a lot does its best to describe the observations of the world around us not necessarily being a sort of like end all be all this is what this is and and of course like my question not meaning to yeah. like discredit the or like invalidate the experiences of like non-binary people or like any sort of like each individual's own experience, I, I guess more of it was um, kind of more on like the, the social cultural aspect of it and like how like the neuroscience and biological aspect sort of would translate into it. Cause like a little bit more like specific context, I, I do have like a friend that is um, from the Philippines and I was having a conversation about pronouns and uh, gender identity and stuff. And they were talking about how like in, in the Philippines, it's, it's not quite as um, big of a, a concern or a topic there are some people who just who you know they they identify they identify a little differently or they you know they just they don't give a lot more concern to it because i actually asked that person i was like i just want to be respectful like what are your pronouns and they were just like i don't really care i mean they they do present a little bit more of a um like a feminine female um like i, I noticed on facebook that 
you know, she uses she, her pronouns. And I was like, but I've also heard some other people refer to her as he, him, or like they, them pronouns. So I was like, I want to, you know, I just want to make sure that I am, I am like accurately presenting you, you know, as best as I can. So I guess that kind of like sparked that, that whole thought process in my head. And of course, who better to talk to than two of you? <laughs> yeah, it is, it is interesting seeing what people think when they're from other cultures. Philippines has it's kind of own uh, interesting relationship with trans people. I don't really know if I know enough about it to authoritatively say, but they do have a cultural recognition of some form of trans people and have done for a while in their kind of like traditional culture um, it, in a very different way to lots of, sort of um, countries that were uh, colonized by Christianity more early on, um, which is interesting and, and it changes how people see things. Um, I guess one thing I just was going to say on on cultures that have stronger and weaker gender stereotypes. When you have um, a lot of pressure for people to fit into boxes, if you either have some kind of really horrible totalitarian, you know, dictator or something, or maybe if you have a really strong religious social force or something, you often see a lot less openly out LGBT people because it's dangerous for them either a threat of attack or a threat of being um, shunned from society and not being able to sort of get by. Um, that doesn't mean that there are less LGBT people necessarily. It means that they're having to pretend to be something else to fit into society. But generally, we see that the more uh, strong the rules are for this kind of stuff, usually that usually coincides with patriarchal... Um, rules like usually you see like fascists usually like having a really strong patriarchy kind of system um and religions usually like them and usually the stronger those kind of patriarchal forces are the um the stronger the gender stereotypes are men do this women do this and in those societies you usually see uh less openly out trans people it's harder to transition transition's not even possible and usually the more lax um gender stereotypes are the less pressures there are the more trans people come out and are able to be free. And I think if there's there's often a, a common argument you will see from anti-trans people that trans people are just like stereotypes. They're just like gender stereotypes. And there's the reason that's wrong for a lot of reasons. You know, you get trans people who don't conform to gender stereotypes, even for the um like gender they're transitioning into and, and all that kind of stuff. But also it just doesn't correlate in the world if we just look at all the different cultures in the world at the moment generally the more patriarchal strong gender stereotypes we have the less trans people there are out so um yeah it, it's definitely a factor in it but it's kind of the opposite way to what you would expect if gender were a gender identity was just some social force that were created i think that that alone should be enough to make people realize that lots of these anti-trans things are just total garbage Does Does that the point your I question one in <laughs> Yeah, I think we're going to have to move yeah. on because uh, we've got some more callers on the line. But this was great. And again, if you want to talk about this more, you can always call in the next time that both of us are on. And we'd love to talk to you more about it. Great. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Have a good rest Thanks. of your day. Bye.